Welcome everyone. My name is Matthias Kimmeter and I'm the engineering manager for SAP HANA Spatial, which is HANA's geospatial processing engine. Today, I would like to introduce you to some specifics and concepts of geospatial data. Let's start with a short description of what geospatial data is. So if you see here on the left side, that real world scenery with a nice uh, road and a river in the forest, um, we can capture an image of that using satellite or drones. And the output, the image is called raster data. So what we have is a rasterized image uh, where we have pixels with like different colors or different values per pixel. Out of that raster image, we can extract so-called vector data. So vector data is what you see here. Um, you have a essentially a polygon for the road. You have a polygon for the river. Uh, you see that there's even a, a gap or a hole in that driver polygon. And you have a point for the car that is driving on the road. So when we're talking about HANA's geospatial processing engine, we're always in the domain of geospatial vector data. On a database level in HANA, you can store different kinds of geometries like polygons, points, line strings, what you see here on the right side. One term that you will often come across when dealing with geospatial data is the spatial reference system. What is a spatial reference system? A spatial reference system tells you how to model the Earth. So it tells you how to interpret coordinates that you get and how to map it to a specific point on Earth. Um, you may wonder why there are different spatial reference systems, because you will probably be familiar with latitude and longitude. And given latitude and longitude, you'll exactly be able to map one certain point on Earth where, where that location is. Um, there are good reasons to actually have different spatial reference systems. So first of all, there's the group of geographical spatial reference systems. In that case, the Earth is modeled as an ellipsoid. Um, spatial computations are executed on the ellipsoid surface but they are rather expensive. If you look at the picture at the right side, you'll see depicted in green, the Earth's irregular shape. And you'll see that they're actually different ellipsoids fitting different regions of the world better. So there is the red ellipsoid, which is the locally best fitting ellipsoid, let's say for the left side of that irregular shape, whereas you have the blue ellipsoid, which is the ellipsoid that's best fitting according to the mean sea level of the Earth. On top of that, you have the projected spatial reference systems. So this is essentially, again, the Earth modeled as an ellipsoid and then projected onto a flat map, like you see here behind me. Um, in that case, spatial computations are cheaper because they're just uh, in Euclidean space, so the mathematics are simple. Um, but on the other hand, of course, you got some distortions due to the fact that you projected that ellipsoid onto a flat map. I brought one example with me to give you an idea of what the impact of those distortions is. You see here on the left side, a round Earth globe with uh, circles of exact same size drawn onto the globe. On the right hand side, you'll see the same scenery just projected uh, onto a flat map using the Mercator projection. The Mercator projection is often used for uh, maps of the world that you have in your room or, for example, uh, web mapping services. You'll see on the right hand side that there's quite a huge distortion for those uh, same size circles. You see that they get bigger the further you get away from the equator. And um, to give you an idea what that means for the different countries that you see on the map, just imagine that you would cut out Greenland and lay it all over Africa. What you would see is the picture here on the left side. You would think that Greenland has a similar size than Africa. Actually, in real life, if you do the same thing on a globe, it would more look like the right side here. So Greenland is still a large island, but uh, it's considerably smaller than Africa is. There are whole countries suffering from that effect, like you can see here in that tweet. So if you would cut out New Zealand and lay it over Europe, you'll actually see that New Zealand is not a small island, it's rather, you can lay it across Europe. If you want to check the same for your country, you can just uh, go to that site, thetruesize.com, uh, which I love to play around with. Also, I brought another example with me showing you 
how different spatial reference systems could look like. So if you're not familiar with spatial reference systems, uh, the spatial reference system that you see here may look a bit weird to you. It's the Demaxion projection. So how you get to that Demaxion projection, you'll see in the video here on the right side. Um, actually, it's the world is projected onto a net of icosahedrons and unfolded to that map. So why do you do that? You do the same exercise again. You have the same size circles on the map and you project it with the Maxion. You come to that picture. You still see that there's a distortion, so they're not perfect circles anymore, but at least they're approximately the same size. So from that perspective, you could consider that map more accurate as the Mercator projection, which you've seen before, although it looks very weird from the beginning. As of now, with HANA 2, SPS05 and HANA Cloud, we support more than 9000 spatial reference systems, both round earth and planar projections. Thank you for listening and stay tuned for my next video, where I'm going to tell you more about the support of spatial data and SAP's ecosystem.